Bama basketball is a win away from going as far as they ever have in the NCAA tournament. We're going to talk about Nate Oates' team and their showdown against number one North Carolina. Kalen DeBoer and his guys bringing in some of the top prospects around the country. Alabama has netted some of them as well to commitments. We're going to get into that. Welcome to the Bama Tailgate YouTube channel. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. That's a great way of saying Roll Tide. And let's get this party started. Hit the bell so you know when we're dropping new shows. Here you go. Your invitation right here. All right. What do you say, everybody? There he is, Mr. Brett Elmore uh, at Brett Elmore Show. I'm Mick Gillespie at Broadcaster Mick. And I feel like I, I just got to play this one more time. Uh, Big Sexy Elmo, you gave me an intro. So let's play your intro one more time for those that missed it. And, um, you know, you've, you've said, hey, I needed to be on the open. So you just gave me your own open. They call him Big Sexy Coming at you from the Walker County. Jasper is his hometown. He's no forgiving free right now. Oh, big sexy. Throwing out those Alabama thoughts. Sneaking out your mom's window without getting caught. Nick gives you the SD, but Big Elmo is here to please. I love it, dude. Love it, man. That's it. Man. That's it's amazing good. stuff. That is amazing. And that gets us all ready to hear from you. Uh, people know you from WJLX radio in the mornings in uh, Walker County and big, sexy Elmo. I mean, uh, who, who was that that you got to voice your open it sounded a little bit like uh teddy pendergrass uh it's called the west jasper seven okay uh yeah the west jasper seven uh voice it was in the studio spent most of the time this weekend laying down the uh, the beats laying down the tracks uh had the headphones on all yeah. all weekend and and uh we got it perfected and and uh and it was uh actually filmed and directed by um the guy who did all the Star Wars films. Yeah, cool. George Lucas. Yeah, George it, Lucas. It, it looks great. Uh, I got to tell you, man, you guys did a great job. And the uh, Jasper, production. I'm a fan of the Jasper 7. I, I can't wait to see them. I'm going to have to catch one of their next tours. Okay. All right, well, let's get into this, man. We talked a little bit about this already, but it's not going anywhere, and that's Bama to the Sweet 16, uh, 72-61 over Grand Canyon and – you know, you talked about it. Grand Canyon came in with so much momentum, but knocking off Joshua Tree. They beat Yosemite not once but twice. Mm -hmm. They they took out Yellowstone, That's and right. uh, they gave Alabama all that they wanted. I thought that it was a knife fight type basketball game. Bama didn't get helped by the officiating at all. And uh, it, a lot of things could have gone against them, but Mark Sears and company found a way to get it done. And this is the crazy thing is that you start to look around the SEC and Alabama has emerged as the number one program in the last you know five years. I mean, this is the third sweet 16 for Nate Oates. Auburn doesn't have that. Tennessee doesn't have that, you know, uh, and not, neither does Kentucky. Now, Tennessee's had some success. They're going to the Sweet 16 as well. Only two SEC teams left. But uh, Nate Oates continues to uh, really be a trailblazer when it comes to Bama basketball. Yeah, you were talking about and, and before I realized that, uh, that uh, Bryce was the coach there at, uh, at Grand Canyon, I thought they were coached by Yosemite Sam. <laughs> um uh no yeah yeah you're right Bama basketball has really um um yeah they carry the banner really um in the state and they're carrying the banner along with some other team from the SEC uh in the tournament now 
when the FCC didn't have a whole lot of luck there in the opening round. Um, I hated to see Texas A&M lose the way they did um, against Houston. Man, they had them reeling. I watched the uh, uh, second half of that ball game. It was great. But uh, Coach Oates has done a great job, and it's just a testament to the program. And uh, he's he signed the contract uh, extension. Uh, he's gonna uh, gonna be around for a while. And I, I also think that uh, we really need to get serious about the new facility too. Um, but uh, looking forward to the the Sweet Sixteen, the round of sixteen, and Alabama playing uh, a blue blood. I mean, um, North Carolina they they go about seven deep with with just. In, you know, seven that could start for anyone in the country. Um, <clears throat> but this is going to be, it's going to be a tough, uh, tough ball game because uh, Alabama's defense has been obviously questionable and something we talked about 102nd uh, in the nation defensively. And you have um, a UNC team that ranks sixth nationally in defense they're giving up about uh, um i forgot how many points per game but uh, there's six nationally uh but bama with uh, one of the top offenses in the country uh, i think they're fourth now uh in uh, offensive efficiency this is gonna be a tight game uh i don't know what the line has shifted to it was three and a half three and a half is it three and a half bama getting three and a half yes yeah, so they're an underdog um so I, I, you know, I would say that this Vegas normally has it pegged pretty close. So, so this shows that it'll be a pretty tight ball game. <clears throat> um, and it does look like we'll get, um, uh, is it right? So, uh, he'll, he'll be back. I believe is what I heard or read. Are they saying that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I was curious, you know, I I'm as long as I worry about the concussions, I take those very seriously. Um, and I'm sure they did too. I mean, maybe he didn't have a concussion, just kind of took a bump, but, um, he's important, man. I mean, he's an important part of this team. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. But yeah, I believe I, I, I read that, uh, yesterday that he was going to, uh, to be okay for the game, but, but, you know, folks, let's, let's get, let's get real. Uh, the, the first two ball games, um, uh, the, these two teams are no, UNC. Um, yeah. You know, if we, if we play the defense that we, we did in that offense, um, uh, it does what it's supposed to do. Yeah. We have a shot, but, um, but you know, North Carolina, they're a much bigger offensive threat than, than grand Canyon and, and their defense is so elite. It's going to be, it's going to be hard. Is it winnable? Yes. But you get so deep into the tournament, you're going to play good teams every round. Right. Yeah. You got to beat the best. Right. I mean, to be the man, you got to beat the man. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's going to be by, tough. Who said that? Um, the nature boy, Ric Flair. That's right. And if he says it, that means that's the real thing. That That's right. But uh, hopefully we can, we can pull it off. No, I'm with you. I mean, if you're going to win the national championship, which is the goal of being in the tournament, you got to beat all the number ones because a lot of times that's what happens is you end yeah. up running into them, right? Yeah. And this is the first of what could be, you know, three games against them. The um, the the number one teams, all of them made it. And and yeah. this is a year where, where we had a few upsets in the first round, but it's it's a stacked field of – contenders i mean it's the 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 cream has definitely risen to the top uh in this as in this, the macho man once said yeah uh and who's another famous champion of wrestling yeah. uh um, and slim gyms but but he's right you know the cream has risen to the top it always does and that uh you know that side of the bracket's really tough too because you still have uh arizona looming and who, who's the other team um Arizona and um, oh, dope on it. I forgot. I don't have the bracket in front of me, but I'm gonna uh, pull it up. So just keep you just start. Uh, uh, but you know that that Western, uh, the West bracket, uh, 
it, it's a tough one. Um, yeah. Uh, and and so we'll we'll play UNC, and then if we can make the Elite Eight, um, we would move on and play the winner of the um, the Arizona versus. Um, oh, good grief! I, sh- I should have never brought that up because I here I, look here it comes I got it right here. Okay, and and these are teams. What's crazy is is you're talking about uh, teams that. Some of these teams Alabama's played. I honestly a lot of teams in this tournament Alabama's played, right? So you got Houston and Duke, didn't play them this year, played uh, Houston last year. NC State, Marquette, haven't played them. Purdue and Gonzaga played Gonzaga last year. Creighton and Tennessee played both of them, right? UConn, San Diego played San Diego last year. Uh, Illinois. Clemson, that's who I was looking at. Yeah, yeah. Illinois. Against Iowa State, haven't played them. North Carolina and, and 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 Alabama actually beat North Carolina in four overtimes last year. Clemson and Arizona. So you're you've already played Arizona though. So you you know like these are you've teams, already played Clemson too. Yeah, right. These are teams that you're familiar with. I mean, like like think about it. Okay, so you played Houston within the last two years. You played uh, Gonzaga within the last two years. Creighton and Tennessee in the last two years. So that's four of the eight teams on that side. You played San Diego State, you played North Carolina, you played Clemson and Arizona. So you played four of the eight on this side of the bracket. So yeah. that I mean that tells you how difficult uh, of a schedule that Nate Oates has played and why those games are important because you have familiarity with half of the field right now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely right, and especially in that West bracket because, uh, like you mentioned, you you get you get to you, you you know you got Arizona in there and um and Clemson two teams you've already played you know earlier yeah no doubt so that's where we are right now um so Thursday go from Friday Sunday to Thursday mm-hmm. and um it's this is a you know this is a big game obviously if you win it it'd be the sec you know the biggest win that the program ever had or at least tied for it right didn't they beat Stanford to go yeah, to the Elite yeah. Eight. So yeah. so you got to beat North Carolina, one of the true blue bloods. Uh, but I think it's possible. And and, and honestly, I, I think that this is a better matchup for Alabama than Grand Canyon and, and you know, just because of the fact that this is going to be a, an up-and-down game. It's not going to be like, you know, where you're, you're talking about a bunch of defense. It's going to be two teams that want to put the ball in the bucket. Yeah, yeah, they'll definitely be running up and down the floor. Um yeah, eight thirty nine tip off. What's what's the bet that that's not going to happen right on time? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Another late game, man. I, I hate that on a work night. Too. I know you're gonna have to stay up because then you and then you just might as well just stay up and go right into your morning show. Might as well, or go to sleep and find out what happened in the morning. No, can't do that, man. Do no. that. Hey, right. you know you know better than that. No. <laughs> Throwing it out there. All right, well let's talk. Let's talk some recruiting because. This is something that Alabama, they're taking advantage of spring practice, and we're seeing some of the best players in the country come to Tuscaloosa. And here's one of the best quarterbacks in the country, Jared Curtis, 2026 QB, coming to Tuscaloosa this week, March 28th. What can you tell me about Curtis? Uh, Curtis, um, he is a uh, uh, Georgia commit. Uh, He's 6'4". 225 pounds from Nashville plays at to Nashville Christian school. Uh, he's got a big arm. I know that. Um, uh, and like I say, a pretty good build. Uh, he led to Nashville Christian to the semifinals of the Tennessee, uh, uh, division two, a playoff. Um, uh, 180 of 321 passing attempts. That's 56 percent. Threw for over 2,500 yards and 25 touchdowns, but he also threw nine interceptions. Uh, and he's got some wheels, Mick. Um, he ran for five over 500 yards and 13 touchdowns. Um, as a, I guess as a sophomore, uh, he was runner up for um, Mr. Football. Gee. No, as a no, as a freshman, uh, yeah, back in 2022, he was runner-up for Tennessee's Mister Football as a freshman. 
Uh, and uh, he, once again, he threw for over uh, 2,000 yards, 27 uh, touchdowns as a freshman. Jeez. But uh, it got a lot of schools after him, obviously. Um, but um, uh, he's committed to Georgia, but he's a five-star that maybe, quite possibly, we could flip. But he, uh, he's, he, you know, he's he's committed to uh, the Bulldogs. Okay. All right. Well, he'll be in Tuscaloosa. Time to flip him. And another guy that's coming to town, Justice Terry. This is a five-star defensive lineman from Manchester, Georgia. He'll be there on April tw- uh, April 6th. But this is another guy from the Peach State that Alabama would love to roll right into Tuscaloosa and get on the program. Yeah, and another guy that's committed, and I don't know what the deal is with USC and these Southern commits. They're really uh, coming in the back door, getting our st- getting our guys away from us around here. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he's committed to USC, 6'5", uh, 275 pounds, plus for Manchester High School. Um, had a lot of guys on his list or teams on his list, including uh, Alabama, Florida State, Georgia. I think Miami's in the uh, mix. Um, I've been uh, told that uh, a lot of people refer to him as a bully, uh, which is what I like. Uh, he's uh, He's college ready. Um, and, uh, uh, probably the only, uh, part of his game that, that folks were talking about is maybe he needs to, uh, work a little bit more on his, um, pass rushing, but, um, 2023, uh, his stats, um, he racked up 78 tackles, 13 sacks, um, as, uh, Manchester went 11 and three. Um, and went to the state title game. Then in 2022, uh, he tallied up 38 tackles uh, and also got some snaps at tight end. So another guy that um, has been playing a little bit uh, both sides of the football, but going to keep an eye on him. Um, He's one of these guys that if he continues to develop, uh, like you mentioned, he's a five-star. This guy could be playing on Sundays. Nice. I love that. All right, last guy that we're going to talk about is another five-star. Now I say that because it, it isn't from the normal recruiting services. Um, no, Cole's professional camp has said that Cooper Helmke is a five-star. And this guy's from St. Martin's Episcopal High School in Louisiana. One of the best kickers in the country. Everyone wants to know what we're going to do without Will Reichard and uh, Helmke just hit Tuscaloosa. Yeah, they have an odd way of uh, uh, rating these these kickers. Um, they go to a lot of camps. A lot of the kickers do, at least the elite ones that specialize in nothing but kicking. And he's apparently the 11th uh, best kicker in the country in this class of uh, 2025 from down in <clears throat> Louisiana. Uh, but uh, apparently, I mean, what can you say? I mean... Uh, He's um, he checks all the boxes as far as a really good kicker, uh, pretty consistent. Um, uh, been showing some strong performances at camp, uh, so uh, we'll see what happens with him. But you know, I've always thought that you know I remember the days of uh, me turning my back to the TV and closing my eyes whenever we'd kick a field goal. Uh, you know, that's where the game begins, kicking game. And, uh, you know, that, and that's a, that's a part of the game that can get you beat. Oh yeah. Um, so I, I've always been, um, uh, a guy that's always said, why can't we just get us a, a great kicker at Alabama year in and year out? We had that, but now we've lost him to the NFL. Uh, and now we've got to replace him. Yeah. And I mean, that's part of it, you know, but I, I feel like getting great punters and kickers is vital to win. I mean, you uh, know, um, no they're, doubt. They're, man. They're, they're game changers, Mick. And, and, and even the punter, I mean, he can flip a field. If you have a good punter, yeah, he can flip the field in no time. In one kick. Yeah. He flipped the field, you know, AK Scott, you remember him? Oh yeah. Uh, just, just a beast when it came yeah. to like those super foot kicks, super Will, foot kicks. <laughs> Will Riker. Yeah. yeah. Will Reichert. Uh, yeah. Great kickers. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, pretty exciting. 
All right. Well, uh, let me go ahead and say that we're brought to you by Pearl River Resort over in Choctaw, you know, Philadelphia, Mississippi, hour and a half from Tuscaloosa, two hours from Birmingham. They got the uh, Vegas style sports book, the timeout sports lounge with all the TVs and you can you know, lay bets down whether you want to use the kiosk or you've got the, the, the table or they're there to help you as well. They've got table games, slots. It's it's a great casino. With some awesome perks, including Dancing Rabbit Golf Course, which is just an amazing course. They call that the Augusta that you can play. And they've got the spa over there. And uh, we've got some great concerts coming to town. Yeah, the Wallflowers will be there on uh, Saturday night, May 4th. Um, Lone Star will be there Saturday night, May 25th. Uh, And then Brian McKnight on June 29th going to be a big uh, 4th of July weekend there at Pearl River as we got boys to men on Friday, July 5th, big and rich the next night, Saturday, July 6th with Gretchen Wilson at Cowboy Troy. So some really good entertainment coming up um, there at uh, Pearl River. All right. There, there you go. And then tell everyone about the uh, Brett Elmore show on WJLX radio. Yeah, we get to kicked off 6 a.m. Central each and every weekday morning. You can, uh, of course, listen in in our area here on uh, 101.5 FM in north, north central Alabama on 102.5 HD3. Thanks to iHeartRadio, the iHeartRadio app. Tune in the custom WJLX uh, app. You can get us anywhere. And uh, I hope hope you'll join us. So 6 till 10 Central on WJLX. I want to say this, too. I appreciate all of you guys that talk to us in the comment section. So many great comments, you know, and you guys saying, hey, here's what I think about this. And I watch you guys every single day. We really appreciate it. Uh, that's what this yeah. is all about, having a good time talking Bama sports and laughing at ourselves and laughing at the situation and cheering for Alabama. So thank you for making this your place to come hang out and talk Crimson Tide every day. Uh, Make sure that you like and subscribe Bama Tailgate on the uh, YouTube, and uh, we'll talk to you guys again tomorrow. Roll Tide, everybody. 